I'm going to focus on eradication, and uh, uh, what I want to summarize is how eradication could be achieved. Uh, we know that when we stop hard, uh, there is always a rebound in viral load, and then that uh, the provider DNA the, where the virus is hidden so uh, remains uh, pretty stable, uh, stable through time because there is a sort of ongoing viral replication that uh, is always uh, capable to, to uh, allow a rebound in the viral replication when we stop the, 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 the antiretroviral treatment. And this uh, ongoing, ongoing viral replication has been well uh, shown recently uh, uh, where uh, in the tissue reservoir it was observed a persistent HIV replication, uh, but also in uh, 2010, six years ago, uh, my team uh, with Javier Martinez Picado were capable to show that uh, by intensifying with raltegravir, there was transient increase in uh, 12TR uh, productions, and this uh, in some way was telling us that there was a sort of ongoing viral replication. So it seems that Again, uh, at least pro, uh, in some of our patients, perhaps not always, but uh, uh, in, in some areas or uh, in some uh, regions, uh, there are uh, on, ongoing viral replication. And what we want to achieve is a continuous decline in the provider DNA and in the viral reservoir to cure HIV infection. Uh, we know that if we initiate uh, very early antiretroviral therapy, according to the FIVIC, uh, stages, uh, if we st uh, uh, start therapy after between uh, w one week and uh, three months, which is what uh, uh, it means the F1 to F4, F5, F F6. So these stages represents between, between one week and three months. And starting during this period, the, uh, the sooner the better, but then we always uh, achieve quite significant decline in the vital reservoir. While after that period of time in chronically infected patients, starting therapy will not impact in the vital reservoir despite remaining undetectable for prolonged periods of time. So let me explain to you why, uh, which is the role that plays CD80 cells uh, for uh, curing uh, strategies. And uh, we know that uh, more virus is made, worse a person does. And our goal is to limit virus production. And we know as well that uh, preferentially uh, HIV infects CD4 cells, monocytes, and macrophages. And uh, we know that uh, the infected cell, the viral proteins, are uh, through HL, HLA class 1 are presented, the viral peptides. Uh, through this, again, HL, HLA class 1 alleles, and this then calls the attention of CD8, and it's uh, HIV-specific CD8 T cell, so which are cytotoxic lymphocytes, and uh, through the uh, CD8 receptor and T cell receptor, they combine, and this uh, will release lytic granules that will kill uh, the cell and also will release cytokines and chemokines. Then uh, uh, this uh, reaction requires only one to a few viral peptide HLA complexes for recognition and uh, can kill infected cells before progeny virons are produced. The question is what are the characteristics of HIV specific CD8 T cells that contribute to immune control? And we, we have protective and risk alleles. And the protective are the 5701, and the risk are the 5503, for instance. And uh, these are uh, peptides that uh, are uh, probably the protective, allow better presentation of the viral peptides and uh, an easy immune recognition. Uh, and uh, also, we have to know that continuous viral uh, production uh, and continuous exposure to viral antigens promotes P53 
PD1 expression, we will uh, allow that to block CD8 T cell uh, activity and to reduce the cytotoxicity by CD8 T cells. Also, we know that because the HIV mutates a lot, the, the, there are viral mutants that emerge and that, uh, are, is, is that they escape to immune control. So, we can conclude that HIV-specific CD8 T cells can kill virus infected cells before progeny virons are produced, that HLA <coughs> and viral and the viral peptides presented influence by the load. So there are favorable HLA and unfavorable ones, as I mentioned before. Uh, HIV-specific CD80 cells differ in antiviral efficacy. Viral mutations in CD80 cell epitopes led to immune escape. And persistent viremia leads to dysfunction of these cells. So uh, there are implications for cure. So, about CD80 cells. So, we know that um, the, the HIV is uh, hidden in uh, uh, CD4 latently infected cells, remains there in a dormant manner, uh, but uh, these cells, uh, if we administer latency-reversing agents, uh, these uh, agents will awake the dormant virus and uh, the cell will start to produce, again, viruses. Then these uh, epitopes of the, uh, will be presented by HLA-1, uh, uh, by HLA-1 class, and then uh, CD80 cells would recognize, and as it uh, happened, uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, uh, granules will be released and the cell will be killed, but also, these CD80 cells will express CD137. That is an activation marker that is used to, uh, uh, as a biosensor to define the activity in vitro for uh, drugs that could be used as latency reversing agents. Uh, for the sake of the time, let's uh, move. And, uh, uh, but let me highlight that What's important is that, uh, as, I, as I said before also, that there are escape mutants that can escape to the CD8 T cell control. And it has been shown that these escape mutants are preferentially uh, uh, observed, uh, or mostly observed, in chronic phase treated patients where are these CTL escape variants present. But in those uh, patients th treated immediately after the infection, the only few of them harbor uh, these, uh, these escape mutants. So therefore, this is another reason why we should be treating patients immediately after infection. Uh, also, uh, we should try to design uh, the vaccines uh, containing immunogens that uh, drive the, the immune response to subdominant epitopes because subdominant epitopes uh, will not be uh, affected uh, uh, while the escape mutants uh, uh, will uh, be changing continuously and then they will escape from CD8 uh, uh, control unless we address the, the CD8 T cell response to the subdominant epitopes, which again remain uh, always pretty uh, constant through time, uh, despite uh, the, the, the stages of the disease. So, uh, early treatment of hyperacute HIV infection enhances therapeutic vaccine response. HIV cure strategies will likely require CD80 cell mediated elimination of infected cells through targeting of subdominant epitopes and uh, HIV-specific CD8 T cells can contribute to HIV vaccine efficacy in, con in conjunction with other immune responses. So CD8 are very important cells, and uh, we all uh, know that for uh, curing, we need to uh, adapt the strategy of kick, so awaking the virus with these uh, latent latency reversal agents and killing 
with vaccines that uh, in some way generates the, a good CD80 cell response addressed to subdominant epitopes that can uh, uh, recognize all different viruses and then kill the infected cells. So therefore, uh, also a part of CD80 cells, uh, we have all, uh, to consider for cure purposes the, the use of antibodies. We know that antibodies can be used for prevention but also for treatment and that the, the, the antibodies might block viral entry but can also attract the uh, natural killer activity and help to kill infected cells. And uh, then uh, we have uh, now, uh, it was presented at the PASCROI, the first study using the BRC01, uh, uh, which was uh, the first neutral, the neutralizing monoclonal antibodies, uh, and BRC01 has been the most broadly used so far, and uh, uh, an ACTG trial assessed the effect of these uh, monoclonal antibodies with neutralizing activity, and uh, these antibodies, uh, this antibody has shown uh, that prevents HIV transmission in humanized mice and macaques and transiently, uh, transiently reduce plasma viremia uh, uh, by 1.3 lux in HIV infected uh, humans. And this clinical trial, this ACTG trial, what it has shown is that the majority of participants rebounded by week five, which is what we were expecting uh, for all uh, patients when we stop therapy, they usually rebound after uh, uh, five, uh, six weeks uh, of, uh, of therapy. And uh, the time to rebound, uh, except in two patients that there was some delay, but the time to rebound was not associated with BRCO level uh, achieved in plasma, the age, the neither, or entry CD4 and the time of antiretroviral. So we don't know why these two uh, uh, guys uh, had a, a delay in the rebound, but was even not that important. So in, in what, what happened is that we, we, we didn't see a significant uh, impact by using this BRCO1 monoclonal ant neutralizing antibody, but probably this is because of the potency. We need to use more potent and we need to achieve this uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies that can have significant breadth and potency that will be this star, still uh, not uh, found these uh, monoclonal antibodies. But probably by combining different monoclonal antibodies, if we use forward, we could achieve uh, a more significant uh, percentage of, of uh, uh, inhibition. And, uh, and therefore, so uh, that could be one uh, way to overcome uh, the problem that has been seen using only one monoclonal antibody. Also, another way to, uh, to, uh, to uh, cure the infection could be the use of immune globulins that uh, were uh, a couple of years ago, so uh, Farsan's group presented this trial, uh, this study in which using uh, a modified EG IgG immune globulin uh, containing CD4 and CCR5, he was capable to prevent the infection in the animal monkeys, even if the virus was administered uh, by intravenous route. So the animals were protected if they uh, had received previously this modified immune globulin. In my group, we have also produced a modified immune globulin that uh, compared to the Farsan's one is at least 10 times more potent and we are now uh, moving to a clinical phase one trial just to show if that molecule is capable to inhibit the virus. And uh, on top of that, this uh, uh, molecule, a part of inhibiting the virus and neutralizing it, is also attracting the NK activity at least twice as much that the uh, Farsan's molecule. So we are very excited and we have, uh, we have the hope that, uh, that that strategy could be very useful together with a therapeutic vaccine. So uh, you know that uh, uh, vaccines are, 
uh, composed by immunogens, which is the active component, and vectors. And uh, of course, we have therapeutic uh, vaccines and prophylactic vaccines. But for uh, cure strategies, we want to use therapeutic vaccines. And our, we uh, uh, found an immunogen in my group, which is called the HTI immunogen, that uh, uh, is a very potent one. And uh, this immunogen has, uh, sorry, has uh, achieved significant breadth and, and, and potency by combining three uh, shots uh, of DNA plus one of MBA. These are the vehicles for the immunogen. So combining this uh, has been, uh, we have observed a significant uh, potency in the animal model. And we are also moving uh, in, uh, uh, in the coming month and hopefully uh, at the beginning of 2017, we could have started the clinical trial in phase one in, in healthy volunteers and also in co-infected patients. And uh, uh, with the uh, aim of assessing the potency of this therapeutic vaccine for targeting the viral reservoir. And uh, what we observe with our immunogen uh, is that uh, uh, in significantly increase uh, the, 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 the response after three doses of DNA HDI. So it's uh, for vaccination, uh, it's crucial how you combine the different vehicles and uh, how different shots you administer with the different transporters. And now even a part of DNA and MBA, we are uh, uh, using also CHIM adeno. So the adenovirus of the chimpanzees that is also an excellent vehicle for transporting the immunogen in order to obtain even a better response. But what's, it's, it's, it's nice. Uh, we were very happy to, to observe that our vaccine elicits CD8 effector memory response, which has been associated with HIV control in elite controllers and in the animal model. So now the, the, the idea is to combine uh, different uh, weapons or different strategies uh, for curing. And one would be, so the therapeutic vaccine, the immune globulins, but also uh, drugs that could awake the virus, the dormant virus. And one of the drugs that has been used uh, is the, the romidepsin. So in, uh, in 2016, only three trials are assessing the combination of a therapeutic vaccine plus a uh, 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 latency uh, um, uh, agent, uh, uh, reactivating agent. Uh, and uh, this combination of uh, drugs that awake the virus plus a vaccine, uh, one of them is the BCN02, which is uh, currently being conducted in my clinical unit and, uh, uh, and combining the therapeutic vaccine uh, made at, in Oxford plus romidepsin. Uh, data will be available next year. But now I'm gonna introduce you the Reduc study in which they, they assess uh, a sort of a shock and kill. So strategy in which the, they combine the back four vaccine uh, plus romidepsin and then um, back uh, four consists of four peptides uh, corresponding to a conserved regions of the P24 protein and the vaccine is administered with GMCSF as adjuvants for dendritic cells. And uh, what they did is uh, different shots of vaccine. Then they, they gave uh, romidepsin and then uh, they stopped therapy. Uh, the, what they observed is uh, what is quite interesting is that there, after the administration of the vaccine, they observed uh, a quite uh, a significant, uh, they didn't observe any, any increase in the, in, the, in the viral load, but with romidepsin, they, they observed some uh, tiny rebounds, some, some leaps in the viral replication. And uh, after um, this uh, uh, study, so uh, after administering the vaccine and romidepsin, they observed some decrease in the, in the, in the total HIV DNA and, and the effect in the, viral, in the, in the reservoir. So, uh, but they didn't uh, uh, observe an effect in the time to viral rebound. 
So time, uh, it was 14 days to time and uh, to, to, to vinyl rebound. So the reduced trial, uh, the latent HIV reservoir was significantly reduced by 40% uh, total HIV DNA and quantitative viral outgrowth assay uh, were used uh, to, to, to measure the reservoir. And uh, the impact on the provider DNA after romidepsin could have mediated by uh, antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity through NK activity. And 40% uh, had detectable viral load during romidepsin infusion, which is good because we mean that we are really awaking the virus, which is what we need to really uh, target these cells uh, with the uh, CD80 cells that are primed by, by the vaccine. And uh, after treatment interruption, viral rebounded uh, uh, after 14 days, so this was not successful and, uh, when focusing on the time to viral rebound. Uh, and the uh, probably the possible explanations for that is that decay observed uh, was low uh, and then uh, patients still were having enough dormant virus reactivated that uh, allowed a quite uh, quick uh, uh, viral uh, rebound. And uh, also uh, the vaccine did not induce a specific C80 cells. Uh, and then uh, even uh, in phase two study showing 0.5 lower viral set point after antiretroviral treatment interruption, this will not delay in the viral rebound. Uh, so that means that, that we need to go farther down and then that could then allow to observe a, a, a some more significant delay and probably the timing between vaccine and romidepsin uh, is also important. So uh, then uh, let, let me now mention uh, for the sake of the time very quickly what, how we uh, another uh, uh, bottleneck that we have for achieving the cure, which is how we reach uh, the, the B cell follicle, which is a sort of sanctuary where drugs and uh, CD8 are not uh, entering. And uh, the way that we could achieve that, so we can see, you can see elite controllers, they don't have uh, virus inside the, the B cell follicle, but progressors they have. And CD8 T cells cannot enter into these B cell follicles. Sorry, and then the way, so this is, imagine that this is the CD8, uh, the, the, the B cell follicle, and uh, these are the drugs. We need to uh, enter the drugs inside, and the way to, to achieve that is through using uh, heterodynamic interleukin-15 that has been shown uh, very promising and allowing to CD8 T cells to enter in, the, in these uh, uh, B cell follicles. So these are my final slides uh, that uh, summarize what I do think it's the, the, the combination that uh, should be uh, uh, achieved or sh sh should be done, the combining different strategies to, uh, to cure the HIV infection. So uh, the first, uh, what we want to achieve uh, is to, to, we want to, to move from an infected to uh, infected person to uninfected person, HIV-free individual, and the way to, that, to do that is to prime with vaccine the CTLs, uh, CD80 cells that will be targeting, targeting the infected cells, and the vaccine by itself could be in some way causing some sort of immune activation. We have seen this very recently, it's not published yet, and that could be allowed to really impact in the vital reservoir but if that was not enough, then we could use sophisticated nanotechnology to deliver uh, the, the, the compounds, the, the its DAC inhibitors, the awakers, uh, or even uh, some other uh, uh, TLR7, which is the most promising awaker for the dormant virus, uh, but uh, again, provided or, or disseminated through nanotechnology. But uh, on top of that, we can use then these monoclonal antibodies that uh, uh, the one we uh, produce, we call albajunamaps. And these albajunamaps are these monoclonal antibodies that will attach to the virus at the cells, but also captures the free virus 
and will be uh, inactivated uh, through neutrophils, but also because they will attract natural killer cells, they, they, these cells will destroy the infected cells. And again, uh, combining all these strategies, and probably considering also the microbiome, which is very crucial for achieving a good immune uh, response to uh, any sort of therapeutic of a vaccine challenge, it has been seen that it's crucial. But uh, apart of that, having a healthy microbiome, but combining all, the, all these strategies, we hope that we could be capable to cure HIV infection. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I hope that uh, if there are questions and uh, there is time, I can answer these questions. And if not, I will be happy to, to answer questions later when we meet during the break. Thank you very much.